perhaps one of the most famous of all of the pieces of Mishnah found in Pirkei Avot are the words that you will see on the screen here with you. The words of Hillel where he said, Im ein ani li mili, uchsha'ani la'atzmi ma'ani, v'im lo achshav ematai. Which means Hillel used to say, if I'm not for myself, who will be for me? But if I am only for myself, what am I? And if not now, when? Hillel was a genius because he asked the questions and didn't try to answer them. Because what we really learn is that the process of being a human being is about constantly trying to find some measure of balance between all of the competing interests that pull on our souls and tug on our heartstrings. And nowhere is that more apparent than in the Torah portion that we read in Parshat Chukat. Parshat Chukat, the Israelites arrive in the wilderness of Tzin, not the wilderness of Sin, that's a completely different kind of a thing, in a place called Kadesh, meaning holiness. And the Torah tells us that it was there that Miriam died and she was laid to rest. Now, in other cases, when someone in the Torah dies and is laid to rest, like, for example, Sarah, we're told that Moses or the other people there are given over to mourning, either individually or collectively. And yet, what we learn in this passage is that immediately the Israelites confront Aaron and Moses and they say to them, where's the water? Why did you bring us out here into the wilderness so that we would die? Why didn't we die a few weeks ago, a few months ago with everybody else? Because dying of thirst is a heck of a lot worse than dying from the plagues and everything else that God visited upon us. Yada, 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 yada. And so... The Midrash tells us that there's a reason why the Israelites have run out of water. Who is Miriam? Miriam is Moses' sister. If it weren't for Moses' sister, Moses would never have been Moses. Because when Moses' mother, Yocheved, obeys Pharaoh's rule to place him in the river and places him in a basket, and he floats down the river. It is Miriam who escorts him, Miriam who watches to see what happens, Miriam who arranges to bring Moses home to his mother after he is discovered and rescued by Pharaoh's daughter. And so the Midrash teaches us that God rewarded Miriam by having a well that followed her all the way through the wilderness so that the Israelites, wherever they were, would always have water. But when Miriam died, that well turned into a stone called a cellar, and thus the people lacked for water. Now, here are the Israelites in the wilderness, and they are confronting a potential calamity. How many of you have ever been to Israel? Good for you. How many of you have been to the Negev in Israel? How many of you heard the Torah from your rabbi or your trip leader when you were in the Negev? And what was the Torah that your rabbi or your trip leader, your guide taught you in the Negev? Drink. If you wait till you're thirsty, it's too late. Right? If you ever went to Israel with me, you know that that was all I talked about for two weeks, was making sure that everyone had enough water. Now the Israelites are in the wilderness, they have no water. If I'm not for myself, who will be for me? Moses, where's the water? But who is Moses to them? Is he a demigod who can just produce miracles like that? Or is he an Israelite just like them? An Israelite who, like them, is afraid. An Israelite who, like them, is a little bit lost. An Israelite like them who has been on his feet for too many years and has too many steps in front of him and wonders whether they will ever make it to the promised land. Do they consider him? 
Do they consider the fact that he and his brother are in mourning for their sister? Do they consider his own humanity? Do they consider his own needs, his own wants? If I'm only for myself, then who will be for me? And so God tries to help. And God says to Moses, go take your staff and go over to the cella, go over to that rock and speak to it, order it to give forth water. Now back in the book of Exodus, when the Israelites were wandering in Rephidim, they ran out of water before, and Moses was ordered then to take his staff and strike a rock so that the rock would give forth water. But this time Moses is given a different order. And that order is not to strike the rock, but to speak to it to order it to give forth its water. But Moses, Moses is in grief. Moses is in pain. Moses is angry and resentful over the fact that he cannot even be allowed to mourn his precious beloved sister without attending to these Israelites and their needs and their wants and desires. And he says to them, listen, you rebels, you think I can't get water out of this rock for you? Wham, wham. And the rock issued forth its water. But God says to him, Oi, look what you've done. You had the opportunity to sanctify me in the eyes of the Israelites, and yet you sanctified yourself. Because now the Israelite thinks think that it's you who gives us water to drink, as opposed to me. They needed to learn that I am the source of all their sustenance, not you, Moses. You are not their God. I am. And it is because of that, Moses, that you will not be the one to lead them into the promised land. Wow. Can you blame Moses for having an aim on mealy mealy moment? Try that. That's a tongue twister. <laughs> Can you blame him for not thinking about himself, his own pains, his own wants, his own needs? his own humanity. No, of course we can't blame him for that. So then why does the Holy One rob him of the prize that he has been working toward for so many years, for which he has given so much of his life and sacrificed so much? It's because he is human. Human beings sometimes find themselves out of balance. Human beings sometimes find themselves in situations where they should be thinking of themselves and yet they're only thinking about other people. And human beings sometimes find themselves when they should be thinking about other people and they're only thinking about themselves. Human beings are not gods with perfect wisdom and perfect balance. Human beings are imperfect with imperfect wisdom and imperfect balance. God doesn't need Moses to be a demigod. God doesn't need Moses to be the one to bring forth the water for the Israelites. God needs Moses to be fully and profoundly human. And God needs the Israelites to embrace Moses not as a demigod, but as a fellow human being. And so when God says to Moses, you will not be the one to lead them into the promised land, this was not a punishment for Moses, but an acknowledgement of his humanity. And it is that acknowledgement of humanity that we often mistake. It is that acknowledgement of humanity that we sometimes assume it's for other people to do and not for us. We lose patience. We nurture resentment. We assume that people are going to know when to worry about themselves and when to worry about each other. And so perhaps if we can embrace each other with a little more understanding, a little more humility, a little more humanity, we may find ourselves in better balance. And we may find ourselves guiding ourselves a lot closer to that promised land we all seek to discover. Shabbat Shalom.